otherwise we'll carry on with recording it. Um, so just a brief introduction, I recognise a few of the names but not all of them. My name is Ben Molyneux, I'm a GP in North East London. I've worked in every borough over the last long time now, 15 years, um, but mostly Hackney and Havering. But I've done my share of time and across all of them. Um, so hopefully I've got a good, under good enough understanding of um, your contexts. The reason I'm here today is because I am one of the digital clinical leads for North East London and one of my projects is care homes and remote monitoring and the project to enable care homes to take observations in real time and share that with practices. So we're doing more than that and um, I'll go into that in a little bit. Uh, some of you will have heard some of this before. Um, hopefully uh, as much of this as possible is sucking eggs to you, um, but I will go through things like the News 2 score just so that we're all on the same page. Um, and the context of why we're doing it. And then I'll do a bit of a demonstration just for five, ten minutes, just to go through um, a little bit of what, what it's going to look like. Um, I should say at the outset that I did not design it. I am not particularly IT savvy. I have just used the system over the last couple of months while I've been testing it. Um, it doesn't look brilliant in every situation, and I'm sure there will be bugs that we still need to find. But we have done user acceptance testing and we have found that it is safe sure. and that it does the job it's been made to do. So we're, we're confident that we can roll this out now and it's going to be useful for GPs and for care home staff alike. Um, will it look better in six months? Absolutely. Are there things we can be adding throughout? Yes. So once you start using it, uh, even before you start using it, if there are things you think mm, you, you've missed something obvious here or it doesn't work in the way we expect, there's loads of scope for us to change, improve and um, reflect on it. So this is the beginning um, and this is not designed to be the training you're going to get. It's just designed to be a show and tell, enable you to have a bit of a conversation about it, um, uh, air any concerns, discuss any products you wanted to that you're not sure about, talk about rollout and how that's going to look. Uh, and basically, just, as I say, a bit of a show and tell. So I have to share various bits and pieces, which I'm not always brilliant at, but hopefully this will go smoothly. Um, some of it will have to be a video on a rate over because the sound doesn't work. But let's start with quick presentation. Can you see that OK? If you can't, then shout. So I'm just going to spend a, a few minutes just running through a bit of the background because some of you will be close to this and others of you will never have heard of the digital team. So as I say, it's a North East London team to try and improve the digital offer and various different things. And as I say, this is about a bit of an introduction and a show and tell essentially. So the, the scope of the project is, is pretty large when you think about it. We've got 260 care homes across North East London, five and a half thousand beds, and they are hugely different. We've got you know, specialist uh, nursing care. We've also got things like LD homes. We've got um, warden controlled situations. Uh, we've got within that very different demographics of our patient populations. And we've also got very different digital maturity of the care homes. It's really not uncommon to find people just using pen and paper. They don't have NHS email addresses. They don't have Wi-Fi. Uh, and there's a big piece of work to try and level everybody up so that they're in the 21st century to enable us as GPs to help them as well as we can. So this is just a slide to reference that wider work that's being done to try and help um, care homes do as much as they can in the 21st century. So by now, everybody, I think, should have an NHS email address. Uh, we're working through getting Wi-Fi and substituting Wi-Fi if that doesn't work. But the purpose of today on the right hand side is the remote monitoring bit. And it's just the use of technology to to record vital signs to detect problems earlier. And if we're going to get the, the definition we have to use for our purposes is remote monitoring. It's just using digital technologies to collate medical information from one person who's in a distant site and transmitting it to you, the clinician, in another place without physically having to see them. And hopefully the, the concept is obvious that it enables us to do things more easily and efficiently. It doesn't mean the default of GP home visit for every scenario. Hopefully this will empower care home staff to do some of that work for us. And hopefully they will understand the benefits of that as well, rather than feeling we're just getting them to do work for us. Um, but that's the purpose. There's the routine sitting setting, but there's also the somebody's unwell in front of me setting and helping the care home staff to have more tools in their armory. And again, hopefully from our perspective, this is fairly obvious, but 
picking stuff up early is not something that we always do particularly well in our relationships with care homes. Um, care home staff are brilliant and they've got a very good sixth sense. They know just as well as we do when somebody's not right, but they don't always feel empowered to act on it and they don't always know what to do about it. And so the, the benefit of remote monitoring is it enables them to talk in the same language as us. We can prompt them with questions that they can answer and with news two scores that they can populate so that we can have a, a more streamlined conversation. So rather than just Mrs X is not right today and you spend 15 minutes teasing out what that actually means, they can come to you with actually, uh, I've gone through a restore too, and they seem to be in pain, agitated, they're not eating, and they seem a bit breathless. Their news two score is four, and this is the domains that they've scored in, is a much more streamlined conversation. So hopefully we can pick stuff up earlier. And ultimately we know that if we don't pick stuff up early, then you're more likely to have uh, an acute visit from us. Uh, you're more likely to have 111 or LAS turning up, and they're more likely to convey to ED. ED is more likely to admit, um, the outcome for the patient, who is the bit we should remember, is worse. And if we could have picked up a simple UTI three days beforehand by using the tool, then that's in all of our interests to reduce appointments and to reduce the burden on the overall service. And it enables us to be more agile. If we know that uh, the, the new score is one or six, then that enables us to plan our days a bit better. Actually, I've got a care home round tomorrow morning. That new score of one can probably wait if nothing changes. Or that new score of nine, well, there's no point in me visiting. They need an ambulance right now. So it enables us to make more informed decisions. There's also a role, though, for the routine stuff. So let's say you've got uh, a couple of new residents have arrived in a care home and their previous GP had just started them on a new antihypertensive and we really need to keep an eye on their blood pressure. Whereas before it would have been um, care home staff and resident traipsing up to the practice. It's a couple of hours out of their day just for a blood pressure reading, which perhaps isn't that useful because they've been stressed out in the waiting room. Actually, the care home staff could be doing regular weekly BPs for the few weeks um, and we get a good understanding about what we can do for our quaff targets, for example. So fewer GP appointments and the right care at the right place for the, the resident. Um, also, the general concept of improved connectivity is probably a good thing for most of us um, and enabling the care home staff to access us in ways that are convenient for us and for them is probably a good thing um, rather than defaulting to phone call request for visits. This enables us to have another route to have a dialogue about what we could be doing next. And also by having a dashboard of people's observations, it enables us to have a good idea without having to go to the care home about what's happening with a uh, 10, 20 of the residents in, in, in a given place. We can look at what their blood pressure has been doing for cough. We can look and look at uh, the three or four that we might need to go and visit tomorrow without having to do, without having to leave our desks. So it's hopefully time saving for us. Um, this slide was more for the care home staff, but essentially the, there are two avenues to this. There's the um, kind of planned, regular monitoring of observations. But there's also that somebody's not quite right. And what the care home staff will see is They've got a list of all the available patients. If they think somebody's not quite right, they'll be prompted to do a structured question set, which is called Restore 2, uh, and that will then prompt them or not to do a News 2 score, and then that will prompt them to have a, an s bar conversation about what they should be doing next. And I'll take us through that in a minute. Um, as I say, that's, the, that's in a nutshell what the care home staff will be seeing from this. So the, again, the purpose of today is really just to set the scene. It's not meant to replace the formal training you're going to get. It's not meant to be comprehensive in, in any way. Um, I, I'm hoping that we don't need glitches and it goes smoothly, but um, this is about just allowing you to know so that you can start to plan your conversations with the care homes, because depending on the, what you've got in your geography, you could have um, a combination of an LD home and actually a low intensity ward and control setting and a nursing home. And they're going to need quite different things in terms of the conversation about how this works, because the nursing home might want to do twice week, uh, twice daily observations on their, their patient set. And they might want to be talking about, well, we've got a system in place now. How do we change that? What does that look like with this? Um, whereas the conversation in the uh, LD home, for example, might be very different. It might be there's no need for routine OBS, but um, this is for what you do if the, if the patients are unwell. So it's just to start you guys thinking about how you can use this. And essentially, it's just a tool. It doesn't have to be used. But if you do choose to use it, how you can use it the most effectively. 
Um, hopefully everybody's familiar with News 2 score, but just to reference it here, uh, the, the, the news to score is, a, is has been validated over many years. It's been used in a secondary care setting for a long period of time. Uh, we know that there's good evidence to show that the higher your news score, the more likely to have an adverse outcome. The lower the news score, the more likely it is they're going to be well. And that principle is what underlies this system, is it's a tool to enable the care home staff to ratify what they've got from their gestalt. You know, they think something's not right, but are they are they objectively not right? It's a useful tool. Um, it's not perfect and uh, it was originally designed in a secondary care setting. It has been <clears throat> adapted for use in primary care. It's been validated. So people like the British Geriatric Society have said it's OK. So the CQC um, it won an award for patient safety with the HSJ a couple of years ago. So although it's um, been used more widely in secondary care, it has been established in primary care for some time. One of the adaptations was to create a restore to uh, to try and go with the news to for care home settings. So somebody really shoehorned an acronym in here, Re recognize early soft signs, take observations, respond and escalate into that snazzy title. Um, but essentially it's asking about the soft signs and it's about people enabling the care home staff to qualify what sometimes they struggle to articulate to us. So um, if uh, you know somebody is demented and struggles to communicate, or actually they're not demented, but today they seem off, they seem not right, it helps them to go through a systematic set of questions of, okay, well, what does that mean? Well, it means they they didn't eat breakfast today, and they've actually reduced their mobility and they're off their legs, and they do seem a bit muddled, and actually, oh no, they haven't been to the toilet. So already we've captured some really useful information for us that they can then present straight to us doesn't require us picking away for a history from them trying to tease out what's important and what's not it starts that conversation before we even get involved likewise part of the tool is enable them to have uh, an SBAR discussion so situation background assessment recommendation and decision again probably most of you are very familiar with this but that's uh, part of this situation so part of reading them out now part of the tool is it enables the care home staff to have an s barred conversation. So again, hopefully we'll get more targeted, more streamlined, uh, save us time, get to the point we need to more quickly. So what I'm going to do now is just demonstrate a couple of bits of the system. The first bit is for us to do for the GP, so onboarding a new patient. Then I'll show you a video that goes through what the care home staff will do and see if they need to do a set of ad hoc observations of somebody who's poorly, and then I'll take us back to the GP dashboard so you can see what we can see, the, the bird's eye view of what's going through the care home staff at any given moment. So bear with me a second and just switch over. OK, so again, hopefully you can see my web browser now so this is the portal that you'll see there's also a desktop app that should be auto installed on everyone's computers when this goes live but you don't have to be you can do this from anywhere i'll just show you the web version today so what i'm just going to do is uh, do a dummy run of adding a patient into the system this is a sand bed sand pit sorry so um We've added and removed people a million times, so if it quirks a little bit, um, that's my excuse. So let me just put in a dummy patient. But this is essentially what you do. So the care home staff go, OK, this new guy, Rocky Laverty, has um, arrived. We know his date of birth and we know his NHS number. Could you please onboard him onto the system? So you literally just put in that's what you need. You start with, a, you should be able to pull it from the spine. Because uh, it's a dummy patient, there's a bit of information missing, but essentially it's pulled that from the spine and you can start the process of adding a, a patient. So uh, because we put him on before, I've turned him off again, I'm just going to reactivate him. So just ignore this bit. Uh, so now this is what you'd normally see straight away. So you log this person in the system, it's pulled them from the spine. We're going to activate the service, the News 2 service. So you do the service and you want to start it. 
as I said, this is not a replacement for the training. It's just to show you what it looks like in real time. So I think we're using the Lawns Care Home as our test run, and I'm supposed to be from the Bishop Street practice. Uh, the email address is, uh, this will be a generic practice email address. So where all of the um, uh, data gets dumped at the end of the day, there is a route for EMIS uploads, uh, which is probably outside the scope of the conversation today. But for things like uh, an SBARD outcome email, that's where it will go. And they've been told that that is not a replacement for sorting out the problem. That's literally just a filing mechanism. Um, so do we want to schedule some monitoring? So let's say this is for <clears throat> Rocky's a new patient. And we, as I mentioned before, we've inherited him with just started a new antihypertensive. So we want to keep an honest blood pressure. Let's just say for argument's sake, we're going to do it weekly. And I come on a Thursday afternoon for my care home rounds. And I'm going to say, can we do it on Thursday morning? So thanks very much. What will happen here is if I say yes to this, the care home staff will come in to work on a Thursday morning after 7 a.m. And this will ping as a task for them to do that day. And you can do this for uh, as an individual patient level and you can change it as and when you want. So in a month's time, if I decide actually this blood pressure has been perfect, it's at target. I don't need to keep an eye on this person because he's otherwise fit and well. I'll turn it off. Conversely, if I um, if they've got I don't know, heart failure and that we really want to keep a closer eye on their blood pressure, we can convert it to daily fairly easily. This next field is about the news to, to score itself. So um, there's a question for everybody about do you want to be on uh, scale one or two for SBO2 for their COPD, for example? So let's say that he's not. There's a couple of optional fields here that you don't have to put in because this information is available elsewhere but it's helpful for the care home staff. So if somebody's sick in front of them and they've got the app in front of them, it saves them having to go to find the paper notes, for example, to set out um, some basic information. Because if they're going to be phoning LAS at two in the morning, it's helpful information to have on the app. Actually, they have got CMC plans. So LAS can check that before they convey somebody. Likewise, um, this doesn't replace other um, filing of DNA CPR forms, but if they know this person's got a DNA CPR, we might as well tick that box if we know it as well, so that it saves the care home a worry when they don't know what to, uh, don't know where to look for information. If you are feeling very keen, you can put in the medications. Um, really, this is to put in any red flag medication, so it's not meant to be a comprehensive list, but let's say um, Rocky is on warfarin and methotrexate, it might be worth including that even, you know, uh, it, rather than the 20 other things he's also on. So again, it's just if they need to do an s at two in the morning and they've, he's banged his head, it's useful for them to be able to say, oh, it is on warfarin. So optional things. Then we get into the news two score it itself. So this is here just to prompt you to, this is what normal looks like because you can set custom thresholds. So let's say you've got somebody who has got heart failure and you know they always run low on their systolic there's no point in having a new score of zero with a systolic at 111 if you know their blood pressure is always going to be 105 and you've got readings over the last five years that show they always run a bit low and they're going to ping a positive new score of one from their blood pressure every single time you do it so let's say that's the scenario here i'm going to tweak it and this is the default is you shouldn't touch this but we know that there's going to be quite a lot of people who will always be just outside the norm and we don't want to create loads of work for ourselves. So let's say I am going to set custom thresholds just for the blood pressure. So it'll ask you which ones you want to fiddle with. And I'm going to say systolic. So on the news two score, normally it would say anything under 220 doesn't generate a score because it's 111 to 219. However, it's pretty sensitive for hypotension uh, and I don't want to trigger a score of one in the 101 to 110s field. So I'm going to fiddle with that. So I'm going to change this to 100. And I'm not going to change any of the other new settings. It'll tell you to confirm that just to make sure you haven't clicked the wrong button by mistake. So it's now saying you've changed it so that any systolic blood pressure between 100 and 219 gives you zero. And it's just to make sure there aren't any mistakes made. And this is just a summary of the information you've put in. So it's saying you've got a DNA CPR and a CMC medications. You've altered the news two score. Um, and this is how it's going to look different. And that's it. You've now added this person to the system and they're visible to the care home staff. So that's takes two minutes. Um, 
when we first go live, depending on how many care homes you've got, how many staff you've got, this could be quite a time consuming task. But once we've got past that and it's the more business as usual, you know, but one new resident this week, this can take two minutes and you can brief the, the um, GP staff to do a lot of this for you. Likewise, in healthcare can probably do a bulk upload of patient information if we're not planning to do anything specific. So let's say we don't want to fiddle with anyone news calls and we've got 50 people to upload. Um, they can probably do that bulk upload for you. But again, that's probably outside of the scope of this discussion today. So that's um, that's the background. So this person is now live. So I'm going to skip across now to what then happens if, say, a week later, the care home staff um, are worried. So let me just switch. And I can't, the, the narration on the video doesn't work, so I'm just going to talk over the video. So just forgive us if there's any um, slight time discrepancies. So this is the app that they can see. And this is uh, a list of the 28 patients on their care home uh, list. And uh, they have thing, I've just seen Rocky this morning, all just added on. Rocky seems a bit peaky. Well, that's right, yes. So they're going to scroll down through their list of people. There's more functionality than we go through today. For example, they can request a video conference, but today they're going to do a set of ad hoc observations. That always starts with a restore to question set, which is the ones I showed you before, just formatted differently. So they ideally will go through each of these questions in turn. And in this case, Rocky actually seems like his breathing's not quite right. Um, and because this is a nursing home in this example, he's like, oh, we're going too quickly. Uh, we've said that actually, yes, he's got an oxygen requirement, which is new, and his breathing is not right. Uh, they then go through the rest of the restore questions and say no, because they haven't got any fever, they're not confused. It was an isolated respiratory problem in this situation. So if we go through the video, they're just going through the restore questions, which they'll be doing live. And then because at least one of those restore questions has said it's positive, so we've got oxygen and breathing, it's going to prompt them to do an up to date news two score. So in this scenario, the baseline was 20 and in this set of readings, it's actually nine, I think. And likewise, their baseline sats are 96, but today they're 90. And the rest of the observations for the sake of this example are, on, are normal. So then it's going to say, OK, let's calculate a news two score. And it's got two figures here, the actual news score and the news score. And this is in case, in this situation we haven't, but let's say it's the heart failure patient with the customised news score, it will set up which one's which. So it will say the generic news score is four, but because you've tweaked it for this individual patient, it's actually three. Uh, and it will present the modified one, but it will put both side by side so that you're clear about which one's which. Uh, and you can optionally add the glucose. We're going to add in weight as well as another one we can put in. And then this bit is just running through why it scored what you've scored. So it's giving them a score of four. And then above here, it just says that's because of the, the oxygen changes. And then it gives them a prompt. So it says, OK, in this situation, you should repeat the observation 30 minutes. If the observations show the new score is three or above, then you should take action. And that action is to seek urgent GP advice within two hours. And in the meantime, it was getting worse then you carry on with the escalation from repeating the new score on his. In this situation, I've got, OK, it's, it's 9 a.m. Um, I think I'm going to need to speak to the GP, so I'm going to complete an SBARD assessment. And again, this is just helping them to run through some background information to make it quicker to talk to you. So the background is their normal new score is one or zero, and I'm concerned today because They've got a new respiratory problem, a new oxygen requirement. And as background, uh, it's useful to remind you they've got dementia. And don't forget, this is also for 111 at LAS who may not know the patient at all. Doesn't have a CPR plan. Um, I've given them my profile this morning. It's changed over the last hour. There seems to be quite an acute problem. And then their assessment, what they think the problem is. And this is the bit they, they're pre-populating this before they call you. So this is to try and enable them to, to have thought about it so they can then say, 
this is this is where we're up to at this point in the process. And the final bit is I need you to visit or call. So at that point, they should then phone the GP. Let's say it's in hours and you're due to doctor. In that case, they should, because they've got a news call, they should phone you. And then let's say I'm the GP. I have a conversation with the carers for Rocky. And I say, OK, um, fine. It sounds like this is dodgy. Um, I'm in the middle of clinic. I will come after clinic today. So we've agreed that I will visit. And that it's going to be by the end of the day. Actually, I know this person quite well. And I'm content that even with a new score of four, uh, they can wait till this afternoon's round. And in the meantime, you should keep monitoring the situation. And if it gets worse, then obviously you escalate it. So you might need to phone me back. You might need to phone LAS if it's deteriorating. Um, this uh, orange box is important. This is telling them, and they'll be told this in their training, that this, um, if they just click submit, nothing will happen. If they don't call us or LAS or 11, then this is just going to go into a generic practice email and we may not view it for several days. So this is a tool. It doesn't replace conversation. We're labouring that point very heavily to them that this is part of the conversation. It doesn't replace it. So um, I was very clear that I don't want this to be additional work that they just dump on GPs and walk away from. This is their problem that we are helping them to fix, not our problem that they have walked away from. So um, I hope that's reassuring because I definitely don't want this to become um, a new channel for de patient demand to be booted to us. So that is the end of the video. And then to very briefly is the final thing I do. I'm going to show you the dashboard. So what you will see and um, annoyingly Rocky, just because this is imperfect, Rocky doesn't show up in my care facility, but um, we'll just show you a, a set of uh, other people. So this, let's say this is just another set of random. Um, can you see that still? If you can't then tell me, but I think it's still showing. So this is your dashboard and it's got traffic light system. So it sets up the most recent set of OBS for all of these people, green, amber, red, with a new score here. Now, because it's a test environment, everybody's got a high new score. In, a, in normal times, you'd expect them all to be zeros, but it just enables you to plan. So let's say you've had a phone call about three people that morning. Um, you can say, OK, well, I'm not going to be here for another three or four hours. In that case, do another set of OBS beforehand and I can see what the trend is doing and we can escalate it. The care home staff can also view this and the care home managers can get involved as well. So they can view the dashboard and if they're worried, they can escalate at their end. So I just wanted to show you what it looks like in real life. Um, you can pull up individual trends, you can get graphs, you can print stuff off. There's lots more functionality, but at its core, that's what this is for. So that is probably more than enough of me talking at you. Um, hopefully that is helpful as a bit of a show and tell. Uh, I don't know if anyone's got any questions, queries, concerns, things they want to know about. Um, while you're thinking about that, Selda, do you just want to recap when the rollout is going to be for phase one? I'm assuming everyone here is a phase one practice, but if you're not, that's fine. You'll get it in due course. What's the what's the date, Selda? OK, so the, the go live date at the moment is the 19th of July. Um, all the care homes of who are in phase one have received their their kits. Um, training will commence from the 19th for care homes. We've organised some in health care training for the GPs for the clinical side. Um, and there's three sessions for those. One is on the 27th of July. Um, then the 15th of August and one in September. I can't remember the full dates um, off the top of my head. You will be receiving a welcome pack with all the dates and information and where you can access training. So you don't have to come to one of the training sessions. You could also do it online. You can watch videos. You can read the guides and we are putting on um, some extra support sessions for all GPs every day, five days a week, um, preferably in the afternoon so that you, as many of you can join as and when you want to. Um, and so that's it. And we're you know really excited and want to thank you all for coming on board and joining today. Thanks, Elder.
Um, Osman, you're right. Um, for the acute side of things, it will be very helpful for 111, 999 to help stratify. But I also think there's a role for us in ours. Um, if you, if, depending on what your care homes are like, some of them are really well trained up, others are not. I've worked in places where you can get six calls about patients per morning, <clears throat> and actually none of them needed to be seen. So this would be a useful tool for us to help stratify who does need a visit today, who can wait till tomorrow's routine round, etc. And it, it's a tool for us to use. So um, if you want to use it lots, fine. If you don't, that's fine. If you just want to use it for um, capturing the, the BPs for people for your cough targets, that's OK too. Um, it's it's a tool for you to use rather than a stick to beat you with. But um, that's OK to be sceptical. <laughs> Tamara? Thanks, Ben. I was just wondering about kind of the systems that have like a rapid response team in place. So how is this going to be incorporated by that team? Because we have that service and the care homes should be um, referring patients that they're concerned to them as well. So I'm just kind of wondering how we're going to fit this in with the system so that we're not duplicating um, and and also what I don't want to do is make a, a step backwards in that we've put a lot of work into making sure that the care homes know to contact rapid response rather than the GP first. So I just wondered, you know, kind of how yeah, you've socialised yeah. this with them as well. Thanks. So you're right. There's, there's different things in every borough virtually. Um, so there's a lot of customisation that you can do. So you can have as your agreement with a care home that when it says phone GP within two hours, they know that if it's between eight and 6.30, or whatever time the rapid response is, actually they don't phone you, they phone rapid response. Um, so they, they can still do that. The, um, the information ultimately gets wrapped up in the emails to the practice, but that doesn't mean that you have to have acted on it. It's just that the, the GP record is the repository that we can all access. So um, it's free for you to, so, uh, customise essentially it, you can absolutely send them somewhere else it doesn't have to be always the GP that's just the default settings um, uh, like link, linking that and Osman's query about EMIS so you've got uh, a choice about data being uploaded and I'm not going to go into that now in detail you can leave it in the app and not have any of the data pushed into the EMIS system if you don't want it to you can have um, just the emails that you then can manually include or if you want the raw data so the observations themselves to be auto uploaded you can do that too. There's a slight caveat that your practice has to have paid emails I think it's a hundred pounds a year for that functionality and that's a practice level decision so we haven't turned it on automatically because those practices that haven't done it will get a massive uh, queue if you could start looking through the website you'll see there's like 8,000 uploads pending so that's been turned off unless you want to turn it on, but there are a series of ways you can get the information where you want it and it's it's up to you and the training will take you through what you want to do with that. Um, any other questions or queries or concerns? Do you love it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? <laughs> Sorry, I had another question just about the training for the care home staff. Um, so, I know you said that you're going to have um, support sessions for us as the GPs, uh, which is really helpful, but um, I'm assuming that means that there's going to be similar for the care home staff and oh, definitely. as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, because, you know, the system will work fine if everyone knows how to use it. And the concern is that if it's too arduous, um, then it won't be used and we'll be on our end trying to get to know and have all this training but if the care home staff don't um, take it up to, into their heart and, and see the relevance of it then it, it won't work so you know I think we have to try it but I think that they are the rate limiting step rather than us. Definitely Dr Hibbert so what we, we have training for them um, we have training for them from Monday to Friday we've got support sessions we've got videos we've got guides um, we've they've got their email address they can have one-to-one -one support they can have you know we are here to support and to help um, the only reason I've got in healthcare to provide three sessions um, and that's in addition to what we are also providing is because obviously one 
I'm not a clinician, so I the terminology I won't have a clue about. So I'm the I'll be learning from them as well to answer any questions. And I wanted all the GPs and clinical leads to feel confident that there are their questions could be answered correctly and, and, and properly. So, you know, once everybody's done um, that, the training with once the GPs have done the training with um, in healthcare, we can support on the technical side as well and how to use it and how not to use it. But definitely it's for everybody. The um, so I, no one, no one trained me. I just followed the guide. So um, it's it's not there's there's lots of things you can do, but I think the average GP is not going to do much more than I showed you today, which is you onboard the patient and you see what the dashboard looks like. Um, yes, you can start downloading and printing off graphs over time. Uh, and yes, you can use it for video consulting. That was one of the spec requirements, but most of us are using something else. Um, but if you, depending on what happens over that with AccuRx in the next however long, um, there's a there's a definite me method for us to communicate. Um, but as I said, there's also lots of scope for us to improve over time. So if it turns out there are barriers, to either GPs or to care homes, then we'll we'll pick that up. Um, and all all feedback is appreciated because we've never done it before. So actually, I'll be honest with you, the website is a bit clunky. You stop clicking through. Some of the things don't they're not particularly intuitive. Once you know, it's really easy. But um, we're hoping to clear those things out. Likewise, on the care home side, we've tried to make it actually really user friendly for them. It should be really simple, but that's from my perspective, having seen it for months, perhaps they're going to look at it and go, what does this mean? And one of the gaps is potentially their confidence using the actual equipment to take observations. Others, this will be their total bread and butter. So some, and, and then others will be doing blood pressures for the first time. Um, and and there's, that's a little bit of a, something to be aware of from the practice side is making sure you're confident they know what they're doing with it. Um, Paul, no, um, we haven't validated the news to for that. So that is a customization that um, steps outside of what it's used for. But that was us trying to be realistic that we know that in routine primary care, that's not the same as award setting. And if we had patients that always score one or two and always prompt the care home staff to phone you every single time they get it, that's going to tire you out really quickly. So it's not meant to be used regularly. It's for those specific situations where we can see there's clearly a problem here. And that's why it will always display actual news to and what's reported so that you on the dashboard can see which actually is and the care home staff can see which actually is. Because there will be times when you choose to disregard the adjusted news to and go back to it. So um, it's a really good question and it's something we're really armed and armed about. And it's a, it's a balance between clinicians freedom and accredited tool and this is the fudge we came to so you can choose to never use it Siri doesn't understand either um you can yeah you can choose to use it or never use it any other questions if not that's fine uh a bamboozled you all uh, as I said, I think, or we've said now, the, the training or the rollout starts from the 19th of July. That's not everybody's go live date. That's when we start teaching the care home staff and you guys how it works. The kit's all been delivered. They've got the um, tablets, they've got the OBS kit. Um, some of them have already set it up. Most of them probably need some help to do so. Um, but what it might be worth you guys doing is starting to have that conversation about well, how is this going to work for us? Um, what do we want them to do? Do we want to use it for routine matters? Do we want to leave it entirely for ad hoc readings for somebody's poorly? Um, if you've got a nursing home that's already got a system in place, actually that might be better than what this is. It might not be as good. So it's just, um, yeah, now's the time to be thinking about those things, having those early conversations, which will definitely evolve once you've had the training and you've decided for yourselves how well it works. So did you want to come in? Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say that um, just to to go over what Ben said, I think it's really worth um, 
the you guys talking to your care home managers and agreeing now and and really reinforcing the message that this is a a recording tool and that they still that and that they do still have to contact you they do still have to call you they cannot just press submit and walk away and leave it um, I think that's really important. So if we if we push that message from our side when we're training and then you, the GPs and clinical leads also push it with your care home managers because you do have that relationship with them, then we can really drill down on that message and hopefully capture everything because um, that's something that I've learned today, to be fair, and um, I will be making sure that that's that message is really relayed to the care home staff, managers, carers and people. The uh, login question. Um, so what should happen? Is that um, you can all have your own login. And for information governance purposes, you all must have your own login. Uh, and we said the same to the care homes and the care home staff. If I'm being honest, I suspect the care home staff will just log in once for the day and that will be the person that's logged in. Um, but all of the GPs in a nominated practice, so at the Neiman for, for you, Paul, um, all the practice staff will see the same dashboard. So it doesn't matter if you log in as you or if you create a duty doctor login, you'll see the same information. Um, so it'll be your choice. If that's, so there's going to be loads more opportunities to ask questions, so um, don't worry if you think of something in five minutes. But um, if that's enough, I'll let you guys go back and have your lunch, what's left of it. And we'll be in touch with your welcome packs and the training. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye.